new products, new platforms, new partners. But still, your favorite wrestling podcast that is for the fans, by the fans. The Pie Bomb Wrestling Podcast is here. We're back. Enjoy the show. What's up, all of you, Marks? Yep, that's right. TSF here, Rosario Grillo. Hey, hey, I'm not, I'm not mean guys anymore. Oh, we're not. We're nice. What's guys. up, all of you friendly, nice, amazing? People. Oh, hi, everyone. We love you so much. You guys this are is the best. This is TSF. Rosario Grillo? Hunter Not. Oh, my God. And you're listening to the Pipe Bomb Wrestling Podcast, baby. Hello and welcome to season four of the Pipe Bomb Wrestling Podcast, the show that is for the fans, by the fans. Thanks so much to TSF for that nice little intro video. We love those guys so much. My name is Chris Belcher. This is Andy York. Andy, season four, episode one. 2023 is off to a crazy start. It is. We, you know, we got a new set. We got a new setup, which looks beautiful. We got the boys from TSF sending us the, the nice little video. Shout out to, to Hunter Knott and Rosario Grillo and, you know, our prayers and get well for yes. Grillo as well from the injury. Uh, uh, we know that you're going to come back stronger and better than ever before. So we're looking forward to that. And yeah, we're six days into the year and wrestling has just gone crazy. I mean, we, you know, a, a, a debut that shocked the wrestling world yep. already match of the year contender four yep. days into the year. And then, you know, Vince McMahon decides to crap on everybody's business today and, yep. you know, it's just going crazy. So wrestling is just all over the place right now. We we said 2022 was the craziest year in a long time, probably the craziest year that I've remembered in a long time. Six days in, 2023 is like, hold my beer, because this is about to be crazy. So I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to oh it. But man, I, I feel like we're going to be on a roller coaster this year. You know, like if Rock comes back at Mania and just all, I mean, you, the possibilities of 2023 are endless. Yeah, they are. They're they're endless in the great, and they're also endless and going south really, really yes. quickly as well. Who knows where this is going to go? But if you want to know what we think about where this is going to go, at PBW Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you'll notice that this show is on a brand new feed. It's because we are part of the iHeartRadio family now with Spreaker. Obviously, we are still on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. But this is a completely separate feed. So if you are missing your PBWF every Tuesday, go check out our previous feed if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you're subscribed there and here. So two separate shows. This is on Fridays. That's on Tuesdays. We'll try our best to keep you straight on that. <laughs> New products, like we talked about, ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash PBW Podcast. There are new shirts going up. One's in the process of going up right now. One or two more in the process of getting designed right now. We're working on it. New products coming your way. New set coming your way. Yep. We're going to try to incorporate some new media here. You'll see that here in a little bit. Speaking of new media, new partners Ladies and gentlemen, if you listen to us on Sportswire Radio on our appearance on Monday, we let you know that we are now part of the WrestleBuddy family. That is right. Alex and the crew have welcomed us with open arms over there. Shout out to Tyler Peters for the hookup. We're writers now. We're talking about wrestling in the writing realm. Yeah, we, uh, you know, peek behind the curtain. We've been writers before. Yes, yes. For the XFL. Which um, is coming up again. Which is coming up in again. like two weeks, so, two a month. Something like that, I think February. Middle of February. I think it's like right after the Super Bowl. Is it when, is, is when yep. it starts. Um, yeah, we're, we we wrote for the XFL for a little bit, not for the XFL, but for a website that covered the XFL. It'd be pretty cool if we wrote for the XFL. It would be cool. Um, but now call, we're just called Dwayne. Yeah, I'll call, I'll call the Rock. I got him on speed dial. Okay. Um, he's coming to WrestleMania's inside scoop. Um, yes. But I, uh, you know, <laughs> we've been wanting to get into the uh, the writing, the wrestling world, and the writing world for for some time right. now, and so now this gives us an opportunity to do that. So. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to make the best of this and, uh, you know, definitely be reading the articles that, that, we, that we write for WrestleBuddy. It's going to be fun. It is. It's going to be a lot of fun. So check us out on WrestleBuddy. We don't have an exact schedule of when we're going to be dropping content. We're still working out all of those details. Yep. This kind of came together really quickly, honestly. <laughs> um, so we're still working out some <laughs> of the kinks, but shout out to those guys over there for making it happen. All right. One more thing that I want to add before we get into the meat of our show is I got into a social media argument the other day. Surprise, surprise. On Twitter? Uh, no, on Facebook. Oh, okay. I was like, I didn't see it on Twitter. Right. I, I would have jumped in. <laughs> I know. So I got into an argument, and I'm not going to give the name of this wrestling news site that I picked a fight with for, I'll tell you all fair. 
I'm not going to give the name of this site that I picked a fight with, but here's yeah. what happened. In a sense, they posted something about how you saw the news the other day about they're lifting the in the ban for WWE is lifting yeah. the ban for signing any talent. Okay. So this news site, news, I'll use that term loosely, posted said article that they had written about it. Right. Okay. And I'm just scrolling through the comments and seeing what they had to say. The first comment that popped up was an admin comment from this company. And it said something along the lines of the reason they're doing this is because they tried to put all their chips in with the whole NIL thing mm -hmm. and it completely failed. They okay. use the words completely yeah. failed. So I, in my, you know, as nice as I am, <laughs> I commented back and I said, I'm not saying it failed or it didn't fail. Mm -hmm. I said, but what is the concrete evidence showing me that it completely failed. And the comment that I got back was, and I quote, well, it wasn't working out exactly like they wanted it to, so they had to go this other direction. My comment back was, <laughs> so you're saying it didn't completely fail, it just didn't exactly work out the way they wanted it to. So then my comment got deleted. So then I made a comment back and I said, oh, it's funny that when I state the truth, it gets deleted and everybody asked me what I said and whatever. The point that I'm trying to make in all of this is this show is, a, is about our opinions. Yep. If we have facts to back up those opinions, we're going to tell you those facts. Yep. We're going to present it as such. Yep. Otherwise, if I tell you, Andy, that much sucked, yep. you may love it. Yep. That's my opinion. So I, that it drives me nuts when people <laughs> report their opinions as facts. Yeah. And, I, you know, I think that's where a lot of people, for example, you know, because we'll talk about it here in a minute. A lot of people give Dave Meltzer a lot of crap for his star ratings. Yes. That's his opinion. Sure. That's not like end all be all for, right. for a lot of things. Now, when it comes to certain matches like the Okada Omega trilogy that we had yep. i agree with a lot of what he had to say sure. because those matches were amazing omega osprey from this year he already gave it like 6.25 stars i'm like i kind of get like i personally i loved it it's matched one of the match of the year candidates already for me but that's just it that, that's it's for me we one thing i love about this podcast and i said it on monday um when we were on the sports wire live calling with tom one of the best things about this podcast specifically is we have two different style of wrestling that appeal to both of us. Yep. I, I you know, I think not putting words in your mouth, you can correct me if I'm wrong when sure. I say this. I think you are more invested in the sports entertainment storyline purposes. Yes, I love stories. Right. And, I, and I'm not saying I don't, I mean, I'm a Bray right. Wyatt fan. Bray Wyatt is not sure. Bray Wyatt is a storyteller. Right. But then again, I'm like, yeah, I love the young bucks because they can put on, match after match after match that are killer sure do they look like spots yeah did that take away from it for me absolutely not I, right. I love it so like i think that's one of the things that we do so well is we're very vocal about our opinions mm -hmm. we don't uh invalidate each other's opinions because exactly. it's like yeah i'm not a huge fan of that you did so i and you like when we bring up the point of like this is why i like it we're both like i can see that sure then i don't agree with it or it's not that's not for me, right? But I can see where you're coming from, and that's that's the thing that like opinions are not facts, right? Facts are facts, like right. you know, opinion about certain wrestlers. Dave Meltzer's star ratings are not facts. No, they're not facts. They're they're opinions. But like <laughs> you know, I'm going to take the opinion of like a wrestler who watched that match. Like, yeah, that match was really good. You're a wrestler. You know more about this than I do. So Absolutely. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of agree or not agree, but. I'm going to fall in line with you because this is what you do. So you know more than I do. Right. Exactly. So yep. I think, I think opinions, you know, they're like buttholes. Everybody has one, but it's not fact. It's not the right. end all be all. Now when yep. we report facts, facts are facts that we can't Absolutely. deny at all. And we, you know, we try to bring facts to certain things, but then when it comes to wrestling, wrestling is not actual in ring. Wrestling is not a fact, right? It's an opinion. Yep. And that's, that's, that's where you go from it. I mean, perfect example. My wife, um, is a huge Becky fan. I mean, she like did everything in her power 
Monday night to get Becky to notice her. Like screaming, yelling. I'm, so, I'm surprised you didn't hear her. Becky never once looked at her. I'm sorry, um, Katie. Yeah, I'm very sorry. But then she like can't stand Austin Theory. And Theory was like, Theory made eye contact with her. She's like, I want to jump the barricade now and beat that's him up. So, like, so funny. Like she has people she likes. She has people she doesn't like. It, that's just, that's true with everybody. So right. you just, opinions are opinions and, you know, get over it. <laughs> you might like chocolate ice cream and I like vanilla. We both still like ice cream. Exactly. But we like different and we flavors. Can appre- and we can appreciate the other flavors for what they bring to the table. Absolutely. But I just, you know, I prefer what I prefer. And if you want to hear more about our facts and opinions, Wrestle Buddy. Yep. Go check out our articles oh, yeah. whenever they drop. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. It is. Um, I'm already planning like my first two articles and it's, it's going to be interesting. But I'm going to throw some hot takes at you. Oh, Lord. But anyway, beside the point, also with WrestleBuddy, one other thing that I want to mention is there may be, there's there's some planning. I'm not going to, I'm not at liberty to reveal anything, but there's some planning about some other podcast appearances that yep. might happen with the two of us. Yep. So we'll see what happens. Uh, be on the lookout for that. We'll keep you up to date on our social media at PBW Podcast. I promise we're going to do a better job of our social media presence in season four. <laughs> I can promise you that. Okay, so that's going to happen. You mentioned Omega Osprey. Uh, let's go there first. Let's talk about Japan. Let's talk about, we don't talk a lot of Japan stuff. No. But let's talk Kenny Omega and Will Osprey. Yeah. You mentioned it, Dave Meltzer, six and a half stars, or six and six, a quarter. Six and a quarter. Sorry. Six and a quarter stars. I read a tweet that said Dave Meltzer is going to give Osprey and Omega so many stars that he'll inadvertently unlock Yoshi at the top of the place. I, 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 that's great. I also saw Sean Ross Sapp say, uh, <laughs> Uh, Omega and what is it? Omega and Osprey aren't going for stars. They're going for constellations at this point. Which, I saw that one too. Like, yeah, that's kind of true. I, I saw that, that one too. Listen again, we talk about how that's more of the style of wrestling that you appreciate yeah. than I do. It was a great match. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and I've talked about this on this podcast a long time. Um, the orange Cassidy will Osprey match is yeah. the match that really turned me on to will Osprey. Yeah. I'm not going to go out of my way to watch every will Osprey match, but like that one was good. This one was no exception. Kenny Omega, one of the best in the world. There's no doubt about it. Kenny Omega, outside of Japan, one of the best in the world. Kenny Omega in Japan is just a completely different beast. Yep. Like the dude, I didn't even recognize him when he came out because he was why it was very drastic, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it's like it's like this is the Kenny Omega that got me and a lot of other people into New Japan Pro Wrestling was this version of Kenny, the cleaner, yep. the guy that like yeah he was his. His entrance was over the top theatrical, and I loved every second of it. Right. Um, and then he gets in the ring, and he's sadistic. Like he, like it's he wild. Is it really is sadistic. And the thing, like I think, one of the things I love about Japanese wrestling, and like in Japan specifically, is the stiffer they are, the better the match seems to be. Sure. And this was no exception to how stiff these two guys were. The I'm not a huge fan. I've never really been a huge fan of exposed turnbuckle spots. Right. Like, I don't think they necessarily make sense. Not that they don't make sense, but, like, to me, they're not, especially in WWE, they're not as impactful because it just looks like they hit something and then they fall back. Like Sure. But when, when Osprey took, first off, Osprey taking the DDT from the top rope onto the turnbuckle was a nasty spot to begin with. That was with. so bad. Oh my like god! A nasty spot. Yes, and it then was. he's busted open, and then Kenny doesn't stop. <laughs> like Kenny just continues to go for the head. He does right. the um, Osprey's over on top of him, and that same turnbuckle hit him in the head. And Kenny just pops him up and hits his jaw on the on the turnbuckle. Then he hits a nasty V trigger to the back of the head. Like the thing about Kenny in Japan, is he is so sadistic and so stiff, and it works so well. And you know not necessarily all the time does storytelling come involved in new Japan pro wrestling. There was a lot of story in this and yep. commentary in Japan is different than any other commentary you'll listen to. I think they did a fantastic job though, for people that don't watch new Japan of being like Osprey has a history of neck and head injuries. Yep. And that's why Kenny is exploiting this. And like, they did a great job of telling that. So I really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this match. And also keeping it going because clearly there's going to be more than just one. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like yeah. we're going to have probably one at, I would assume, Dominion, which is their next big show, right? Uh, well, they have the Battle in the Valley right. in February. Dominion, I think. Is that March? It's in March. So I wouldn't be shocked if they didn't have one. Or Kenny may wrestle somebody at Battle in the Valley. And then when we're back in Dominion. Then, know, we have this then we one. have and this then, one. And then AEW Forbidden Door, whenever it happens again, I assume that's going to be part <laughs> yeah, three. Yeah. 
which sign me up. I'm all I'm all for that. Um, let's move on to another moment at Wrestle Kingdom. We don't talk a lot of Japan stuff here, but Wrestle Kingdom was just this past week, so want to hit on that. The former Sasha Banks. Yep. The worst kept secret since CM Punk <laughs> yeah. is what was floated around online. Yeah. Debuts as Mercedes Monet attacking Kari Sane, going after the women's championship. Um, a lot to be said about this, man. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people, if you read what's going on online, it indicates that a lot of WWE people think this is just a phase. Mm -hmm. She's gonna do six months to a year in, in New Japan and then come back to WWE. And they seem to think that she's not going to wrestle in AEW. I still think there's a good chance that she shows up in AEW. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think she's going to sign any long-term deal with anybody. Um, now, the news that came out today about a certain someone may, <laughs> may hinder that decision. Right. She may be like, oh, well, then I'm definitely not going back there. I'm right. going to stay in Japan or TNA or... Uh, AEW, whatever the case is. But with Vince. Yeah, I don't think she comes back. No, what I'm going to say is oh. I think Vince would be the, because I don't think Triple H will. And I don't think Stephanie will. Right. I think Vince would cave on the money that she wants. Probably. If she gets big enough outside of WWE. Yeah. If, if truly money was the issue. Yeah. That everything has been reported online that money is, was, you know, they were so far apart in money. Vince might eventually cave on that. Probably. So I, yeah, I don't know. I, I could I could see that. Um, I think for Sasha, though, or for Mercedes, she doesn't – I don't know if the headache with working with Vince is worth the money. That's true. Like, I think that's, I think that's where it's going to come down to. There's a lot of reports or speculation that she could be uh, Soraya's partner in L.A., um, especially after on Dynamite when she just basically picked Tony Storm over uh, Sheeta. Sheeta, and she was sitting right there, and Sheeta looked livid so like yep. there may be something there i think yeah i have that in my notes too i yeah. think there's a good possibility that sheeta jumps tony before the match yeah. takes her out and then mercedes comes in she shows I, up. but yeah. i i'm not fully convinced that that's going to happen oh me either um no me either. now the match is already set for battle of the valley um in san jose we're getting mercedes versus kari kari which you know is going to be <laughs> amazing because both women are fantastic um you think it's ironic that she's working with a former dude no, talent, her no. first one? I think that's smart. I think I think that's a great way to get her accustomed to Japanese wrestling, but yeah. also like get her accustomed to being back in the ring because it's been a sure. while. So like I think that I think that's pretty smart to to put her in there. I will say the presentation for her was spot second on. to none. I yep. mean, the thing about Japan, like Japan and Wrestle Kingdom, the presentation in Wrestle Kingdom is fantastic yep. like they do a great job of the camera shots they know when to zoom in when not to zoom in like things like that they did perfect she looked like a megastar when she came out yep. um the move she hit a lot of people have been giving her flack for mm -hmm. uh it didn't look that bad to me like i think mean, like, kyrie's supposed to land on her feet and then take the ddt yep. it didn't look bad though like she's still kind of she sold it well it was she fine did. um i'm excited i think this is going to be a different side of her than we've ever seen before and i think it's just it's it's going to be a loose let go version of Mercedes. And I think, I think she's going to take it over. I think she's going to take over the women's wrestling. I think it's going to be interesting. And she's going to make, I mean, you know, the best comparison I can give is Cody Rhodes. Yeah. You know, Cody Rhodes went out and not that Sasha wasn't a name already, by the way, I'm, I'm going to really struggle with calling her Mercedes. <laughs> I really am. She's going to be Sasha to me, but even though she had a name for herself and do to be, now she's going to go out and make it even bigger. Right. And then, become that attractive talent that everybody wants. I think it's like that. Brian Danielson a lot of like yep. she could stay. He could have stayed in WWE. He wants to go out. She wants to go out and wrestle in Japan. She wants to go out and wrestle some of these other promotions that she's never been able to be involved with. Like right. I that's something that she wants to do. I think she shows up in Triple H too. Oh yeah. I think yeah, that yeah, happens yeah, yeah. for I sure. Think, I think so too. I think she shows up in Triple A. I I still think there's a great chance she shows up in AEW at some point. Um Maybe in a one-off, maybe a couple of times, whatever the case is. Especially, I don't think, I think she's just messing with fans too. But uh, Britt in her promo said she's the boss. Yep, like that. That's yep. intentional for her. Sure reason. was absolutely it was. All right, let's talk about one more thing from Japan, and this was not from Wrestle Kingdom. No, this was Pro Wrestling Noah that happened a couple of days prior, January first. 
Yeah, that's right. January 1st. Shinsuke Nakamura. Yes, WWE contracted wrestler. Battled the great Muda. Pro yeah. wrestling Noah. What a match. Yeah. Man. It was yeah. really, really good. And don't take this the wrong way when I say this. I loved the finish. Yeah. I thought it was so creative. Yeah. You talked about storytelling earlier in Japan that's not always there. It was there yeah. right here. Yeah. Like, this was really, really good. I miss this version of Shinsuke Nakamura. Okay, so that's the much. argument I want to make. Okay. So much. I saw, and maybe I'm blind. <laughs> maybe I don't know enough about Shinsuke's past. I saw nothing from Shinsuke that I haven't or could not see in WWE. I, I agree with that now. Like, in Shinsuke and WWE now. I think... I mean, obviously, they they when Shinsuke signed with NXT, he had that fantastic match sure. with Sami Zayn. Maybe it might be the best NXT match of all time. Top five with, for sure. With Shinsuke and Sami Zayn. Yep, top five for sure. Uh, he had some great matches with Samoa Joe. He had some great matches with Bobby Roode. He had he just had some some really good matches, he but did. nothing to that extent that he had in Japan. Um, I think I think the thing that hindered him, and I think that's something that has he's never recovered from. And I don't know if he's ever going to recover from mm. is when he lost the gender twice. Mm. I think yeah. that's the point where everybody's like, okay, Shinsuke is not a threat here. Like right. Shinsuke is not going to be seen as a world champion because he lost a gender. Right. And then all of a sudden he goes back to Japan and everybody's like, oh yeah, Shinsuke is a killer. Like right. Shinsuke needs to come back and, you know, do this thing. So, you know, I agree. I think there's nothing he did there that he couldn't do in WWE. They just have to let him do it. Yeah. But like still, I, I totally get that. And I, i I can see, I totally agree with the fall of Shinsuke yeah. and all that. But like in that match, other than him kissing Muda and taking his mist at the <laughs> end, like I didn't see anything that he hasn't done in WWE. You know what I mean? Maybe the reaction is different. The right. appreciation is different right. over there because Japanese crowds are like none other. Yeah. So maybe it's that perspective. I don't know. Yeah. I just didn't see anything that was like, Wow, why is he not doing that? Or any, I just I didn't see that. And I think you know, part of the frustration, and this is not a dig at you. This is just sure. kind of the way it is. When you watched Shinsuke in Japan before he came to WWE, he was this one thing that we all loved. Okay. He goes to WWE and becomes the WWE version of okay. that, which is not always for some people. What well, Kevin Owens is the Kevin Owens is the WWE version of Kevin Steen. He makes it work. Sure. Um, for some other people, it does not. Well, I think I think there's an argument to be made that AJ Styles is not the same person that he was before he came to WWE. I don't think he's on that same level in ring he is, but I think as being seen as that star, I don't think he is. Um, and so I think this is one of those of like, as a WWE fan that hasn't watched him outside of outside of WWE, this is what you're used to seeing is this version of Shinsuke. Gotcha. For all of for everybody else that has watched him outside of WWE, like man, we miss that version of Shinsuke that would literally kick your jaw in your face and would be that that threat, that killer. I understand. I got you. It just, I don't know. No, I got you. I, you know, it's also crazy that within three days, two WWE contracted wrestlers wrestled in Japan. Yep. Because Carl Anderson had a great match with Tama Tonga yep. uh, in, in, at Wrestle Kingdom. Mm -hmm. They literally name dropped WWE multiple times as he walked he out. Wore the ring. He wore his WWE shirt. He wore his WWE shirt. I think this is the first event ever. Well, you had a con contracted WWE and AEW wrestlers on the same show. Probably. And it's 2023. Yeah. We're six days into 2023. Yeah. And it's wild. Oh, I think the Rumble. I think if Vince stays out of creative, the Rumble this year could, could be, be crazy. And we I'm, I'm thinking Great Muda might show up. Oh, for sure. I think there's a really good chance he shows up. I think there's a great chance that WWE not only brings this guy in, but signs him, Jay White, mm. because he's having a match – in a couple weeks, I forget against who, where loser leaves Japan. Did you read though? It's the other guy they're after. Yeah. Because he is Tomatonga's little brother. Yeah. And he's like six nine. Yeah, he's a big dude. He's a big dude. So his contract is the one that's coming up. Mm -hmm. So apparently that's the so, one they're after. But I, I think Jay Wyatt, there's a good chance that he gets okay. signed. I think there's a great chance Nick Alder shows up. Oh, I signed. think if I mean, I know this is not the Rumble prediction show either, but if I'm putting a 100% guarantee on somebody showing Nick up Aldis. in the Royal Rumble, it's Nick Aldis. Yes. I think there's a great chance Cardona could show up. Oh, me too. For like, sure. I think there's, I don't think he signs. I, I think he shows up. I think there's a great chance he shows up. He's one of my predictions too. Yeah. 
So, so the Rumble this year is going to be fun. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about that. The Forbidden Door is wide open right now in WWE and in AEW. Speaking of AEW, um, again, shout out to our boy Grillo, um, who severely injured yeah. at Dark. Yeah. Uh, so shout out to him. Uh, prayers for your speedy recovery, man. Let's go to AEW, man. And the big thing with AEW in 2023 is this new set. Now, as you can see here, hopefully this is clear enough. This is Jericho's <laughs> entrance on this new set. Yeah. And I'm sorry to be a downer. It's fine. Like, it does not blow me away like it does a lot of other fans. Mm -hmm. But I think it... In this day and age, in 2023, and you're trying to incorporate all of this technology and all this, I think it's hard to get away from something like this. Yep. What I will say about AEW that I appreciated that most people did not is the tunnels. Yeah. The reason is because it was so different. It was. Nobody was doing that. <laughs> yeah. Nobody had tunnels, and they did not, especially two separate tunnels. Yeah. So a heel tunnel and a face tunnel. Like that's well, literally what they, well, until the, Brian Danielson came out and wait. Yes, that's true. Weigh in on this and not to go too far in a tangent. Yeah. I think the tunnels were a Cody Rhodes thing. Probably, probably I would say so. And I, you know, I just because of the old school feel. Like yeah. It, you know? Yeah. I, I think there's a great chance that they could come back. Um, maybe in some one-offs or, or something. I don't think the tunnels are necessarily done. Right. I personally, I, I like the screens. I think it makes it look because I, I texted you this when it happened. I think it makes it look big time. Sure does. Which, you know, is something that a lot of fans have been clamoring for, for AW is to feel big time. The new color scheme. I absolutely love the mm -hmm. set looks the set. When, when we saw the picture looked good, I thought on TV, I thought it looked fantastic. I thought there was some, especially for certain entrances. I thought it looked absolutely amazing. I think, I think commentary looks better than the set. It does. Commentary looks really good. So good. Um, you know, and I think I think that's something that I, I kind of mentioned on Monday. Production for AEW, like the way the crowd looked, the lighting on the crowd looked ten times better to me. Um, the way they kind of shot everything looked a lot better. So I think I think they're trying to up their game in production, and I think this is great steps to do that. Um, is is by having this new massive screen, by having commentary kind of be more off to the side and lit up. The crowd is now finally lit up that you can see. The Seattle crowd was on fire was from wild. start to finish. And I didn't realize how many guys, how many wrestlers were from Seattle that were in AEW. Like, it's ridiculous how many people are from Seattle. Yep. Because you got Darby. Are, you got Darby. You got Danielson. Swerve. You got Swerve. Uh, Aubrey Edwards. Aubrey Edwards, which she got a, she got a big pop. Right. <laughs> she got a huge pop. So, like, I, I think that <clears throat> the, set looked every, the, the set looked great. I think this was a great, great start to – dynamite to aw for the year because the show was fantastic it looked fantastic and the crowd were were heavily involved uh you mentioned Darby allen hometown guy winning yep. the tnt championship to finish off the show yep i know that most aew fans think of Brody lee yeah with the tnt championship yeah i think of Darby allen like i think that title <laughs> Is tailor made for a guy like Darby Allen. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I think that. Yeah. I can't put my finger on it. Yeah. But I just feel like that. I don't know, man. I think of, I think of the TNT title, obviously as their intercontinental title, right. not necessarily in the scheme of the best worker, but the hardest worker yeah. and the guy who's really going to go out there and steal the show. Yeah. And nobody steals a show like Darby Allen. No. And I, you know, I think I probably fit in the Brody Lee category of when sure. you think of the TNT champion, I think of, I think of Brody, I think of Cody and I think yep. of Miro. Like those are the three that, sure. that pop up in my head, but you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's for the guy that is the fan favorite yep. that can go out there and kill it. And, you know, Darby is that guy. Sammy was that guy until he went Crazy. idiotic um, <laughs> backstage. Miro has been that guy. Wardlow was that guy. It's like, it definitely, it's Mojo has been that guy. So it definitely fits that, that characteristic. Uh, Darby beating Joe. Uh, I I kind of figured that the double champ reign wouldn't last very long, right. uh, especially if ROH does start doing weekly production or yeah. regular production, should I say, yeah. uh, in 2023. So it makes a lot of sense to go and take the title off of Joe. You mentioned we mentioned another Seattle guy, Brian Danielson. MJF comes out, does his <laughs> promo. 
we get the thing, which I'm kind of tired of people having to run through a bunch of guys to get to MJF. Like, I understand the concept of it, but right. it's been done like four times now. But anyway, Danielson's got to run through a bunch of guys. He's going to get his shot at MJF, but in an Iron Man match. I it's going to be interesting. I am so excited for that because I think we all know Brian Danielson can go the hour. Yep. Without question, easy in his sleep, he could go the hour. Yep. I think MJF can do it too. And I think I think the thing that helps him is he wrestles such a a slower style he does. of wrestling that he could stretch that out. For, I mean, the dog collar match was like 40 minutes, 35, right. 40 minutes. So he can go another 15 minutes and, and make the hour, I think. I It's going to be fun. Um, Danielson's first match for this gauntlet is against Takeshita, which <laughs> sign me up for that as well because that's going to be a banger of a match next week. Um, yeah, I'm excited for what they're building to. And I think the interesting thing is like when you think of Danielson, you don't think of his promo skills. Right. I'm not saying he's bad at promos, but he's not he's not a CM Punk, he's not an MJF, he's not a Stone Cold, you know, he's he's good, but he's not fantastic. Well, I think a lot of that is that he's been stylized, I guess might be the right word. Yeah, or categorized in a in WWE for so long. Right. So now we can see a Brian Danielson personality, like the Just human cut, personality come out yeah. and he's able to cut better promos. And the, he, he stayed he step would, for step with MJF, which Brian, was fantastic. Brian would have never cut a Your Mama promo <laughs> in no, WWE. No, 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 he wouldn't not at it. all. Not at all. And he did it there. And I was like, you know what? This is fantastic. Like, I love, I love this version of Brian Danielson calling out Smart Mark for being a terrible lawyer. Yes. For doing the your mom joke to MJF over and over again. Like all the stuff he did was just fantastic. So I'm I'm excited for this. I think Brian Danielson being the first, no, not taking anything away from Ricky Starks, who got a big victory over Chris Jericho. Right. It's good that Brian Danielson's the first big opponent for MJF. I think right. that's brilliant and very smart to have that guy to have those two guys be the first one together. Over under on since they brought it up in the um, in the promo. Over under on how many times MJF gets himself disqualified in the Iron Man match. I'll say once. See, I think it. I least, think he uses the ring once. One, I mean, I think twice. I think he does it like twice because I feel like it could be a situation where, like, he does it right at the beginning of the match. Yeah. And then, like, he quote unquote forgets about it. And yeah. then later he does it again. Yeah. And when it's like coming right down to the wire or something, I don't know. I think it, I think that could be a smart story to be able to tell in that. Yeah. Is to disqualify yourself. I could also see this thing going down to no falls until the end. Yeah. I could absolutely see AEW doing that. Yeah. They haven't done it yet. Have they? Well, they've done the 60 minute limit, but they haven't done no falls. But they haven't done no falls. Right. Well, you. this is the first Iron Man match I think they've done. That's true. Yeah, I guess that's true. First real, yep. So if it's a if it's the first no, one, no, didn't I don't, they do? Didn't they do one with Pac and Kenny Omega? I think it was an Iron Man. I think it was two out of three. It might have been. I don't remember. I don't remember. I felt like they did. A, I I could be wrong. I don't know my AEW history. <laughs> All right, one more thing to talk about with AEW that I want to get to briefly. I don't know how much time I want to spend on this. Is this tag team title situation in this whole personal feud with the acclaimed <laughs> and Jeff Jarrett and Karen and Kurt Angle and just all of this? We saw back last summer yeah. that the My World Jeff Jarrett and Conrad Thompson podcast was used as a vehicle to promote the flair match. Yep. They did a whole podcast where he was in character. Yeah. And you know, later revealed that you know, that's what they did. Well, it, they took a personal issue and they turned it into that as well for this one. I'm not saying they shouldn't, should or should not do that on the podcast. Right. But I don't know. What do you think about this whole thing? Um, I don't know what question I'm trying to ask. I think it's Jeff Jarrett just trying to get as much heat as he can. Okay. Like he's a heat magnet anyway. He's really good at getting heat. Uh, <laughs> it's just. It's a funny situation. Max Caster's rap on Dynamite was <laughs> was amazing. It was, it was funny, hilarious. Yes. Um, I part of me thinks that this was all just a work yep. of like all of that happening. I think that's like the most likely scenario. I do think though there was a, a point in time in that podcast where I think 
Jarrett worked himself into a shoot. Sure he did. <laughs> like, he got fired up a couple of times. How can, how can you not when you're talking about a very personal situation? Right. That, let's be honest, everybody crapped on TNA for so many years anyway. Yeah. So they have such a, they don't have the right perspective on what happened anyway. And quite frankly, I believe, again, my opinion, not facts, I don't think a lot of people know exactly what happened in that situation no, anyway. No. So I think he and Karen and Kurt get upset when people draw their own conclusions and assume what happened. Right. When there's probably only a handful of people that handful of people that really know. Yeah, and I think that I think that definitely plays a part in it. I just I think Jeff Jarrett was really just trying to get a lot of heat in the match, which I love the finish of this match. Oh it was very interesting. Of, yes. You know, Look like they got the win. Aubrey, of course, being the hometown girl, she got yep. the huge pop when she when she reversed it. Yep. Uh, and then Jared's promo afterwards was hilarious. So I I think I'm not a huge fan of referees coming out and stopping or restarting matches that were not involved in the match because replay is a thing. And if you want to really do it, you could do it for every match if you really wanted to. Yep. Um. But I think it's I think it worked really well for this match. I just I think I think Jared just worked himself into a shoot. And then Cass was like, okay, let's play with this. <laughs> and just right. took it to a completely different level. We'll see how it continues to develop. You know, there's that rematch it's coming up. Is it Battle of the Belts or tonight, Rampage? It's tonight. It's tonight. After Rampage is Battle of the Belts. That's right. Okay. So it's one of those two, whichever. Yeah. So check out that match. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. If you're just now checking this out, welcome to the Pipe Bomb Wrestling Podcast, season number four. This is Andy York. My name is Chris Belcher. Follow us at PBW Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We drop shows every Friday for you uh, on this channel. And then on our other channel, our fantasy booking show, Pipe Bomb Wrestling Federation. We are coming down to the wire of season one. If you haven't listened to it yet, please go back and do that. We appreciate it very much. If you want to hear what we would do with the current crop of talent, Go check out that show. It's every Tuesday. This show is every Friday. We cover all things wrestling on here. And this show is available again, wherever you find your podcast. Also, Sports Wire Radio. Shout out to Tom. Also, Body Slam Done at YouTube channel for hosting our video versions of our shows. Thank you all for doing that. We appreciate that support. All right. WWE, man. Let's get into it. We have to start with the big news of today. This is not what we originally were going to start with, but how can we not? We're reporting facts, not opinions, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. The fact is there was a filing by WWE to the SEC this morning. There was a Wall Street Journal article that came out with direct quotes. Ladies and gentlemen, Vince McMahon is back. Not as head of creative. No. But as a member of the board of directors. Yeah. There had to be all these moving parts that had to happen for him to come back. Those things did happen. Vince is now back. Stephanie is not replaced. As far as we know, Triple H is not replaced. Nick Khan is not replaced. There were three names that got replaced. I don't remember them. Nick Khan is not one well, of them. Well, three were replaced and then, and then two resigned. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's more information than I had. So, um, so we had two come back along with Vince. I'm going to say this, and we're going to see where this conversation takes us. <laughs> Vince's direct quote from yesterday's article says, quote, WWE has an exceptional management team in place, and I do not intend for my return to have any impact on their roles, duties, or responsibilities. Translation, I'm not coming back to creative I'm just here to sell, which that's been the whole thing. He wants to help the company sell because their media rights are coming up next year. Yep. Yada, yada, yada. He wants to help the company sell. So he's not going back to creative. Yes. <laughs> Other possible translation. I'm lying through my teeth and I'm coming back to take over. I lean that way. Of course. I lean that way. Now, I will say uh, the outcome, no matter what direction this goes, whether it, he is telling the truth, he doesn't want to do creative, but he is going to sell the company either direction. There's going to be a very rough time sure. in WWE yep. um, because the thing about selling a company is people start getting fired to make it look more profitable. Yep. And then when it's bought, other people get laid off yep. to bring in other people. So I think we're heading in a direction where a lot of people that – we enjoy may not 
be there by the end of this year. Okay. Um, I think in either direction. I think if if he doesn't sell, but he wants to be ahead of creative, there's no way I can see a guy like Bray Wyatt staying around. See, I or th- Karrion Cross. See, I think Karrion Cross for sure, not Bray Wyatt. And the I- reason for Bray Wyatt is I think now that he's back and he's making an impact again, yeah, and they're seeing huge numbers and profitability with his merchandise and yeah. everything, I think that's a reason for him to be able to stick around. But I can see your point of the overall image of the company. Well, that and plus, we know Vince. Vince is going to try to get his hands on with that creative can. Sure. And last time he got hands on creative with a Bray Wyatt character, it completely tanked. Right. Very quickly. Yep. And I don't think Bray wants that headache again of dealing with that. So, I, this, again, this is all speculation, opinion based. This is this part is not fact. We kind of right. went through the fact, the fact part, and the fact is that he's coming back with the intent to sell yep. WWE at some point. Yep. Um, and the media rights deal, at least from what I read, yep. I believe is correct, does not expire until the end of next year. Correct. So we're the end of 24. So we still have a little bit of time. Right. But like you said, maybe by the end of the year, we see some things start to level out, Yeah. you know, depending on what all that looks like. But I think the timing is really rough. It is. Because we're heading into WrestleMania. Yeah. And, and, you know? and WWE have been at a high point. The for, highest. For the last couple of months. Like they have been selling out arenas. They have been, crowd have been crowds have been invested. Um, both Raw and SmackDown have been must-watch TV every single week. SmackDown this past week that we're about to talk about almost hit three million viewers. Yeah, yeah. and like it's it, that's it's, insane. It's fantastic showing. The problem is people that people that WWE want to bring in for WrestleMania may not want to be involved right in the same company as someone with Vince, as Vince McMahon who is still coming off of investigations and allegations and everything else. All those articles that we've been reading has said he still hasn't paid back the money that he owes yet. And if I'm The Rock, if I'm John Cena, I don't want my name involved. Well, hang on. No, wait a minute. Hang on. Rock and Vince go go back a long way. But I do see your point about public image. I'll completely go against the John Cena argument because when we saw Vince's birthday dinner that happened after all this happened, Cena was there. That's true. And Brock was there. Yeah, I th- I think Brock stays. Like I think Brock, Brock for sure. Brock's a Vince guy. <laughs> like Brock is. I mean, we saw when Vince left, Brock Got walked mad. out. Basically, yeah. he came back, but he walked out. Right. Um. So I, you know, I don't. I think we're gonna find out a lot more today. There's a, a supposed. There's supposed to be an employee meeting at three thirty Eastern time. I'm sure we'll get a lot more details after that. What well, depends on who we're um, from. Yeah. Um. I just. This is not. The way I, I, this is not the way WWE wanted to start off the year. No, I don't think. They, at all. No, I don't think they did either. Uh, I think they knew about this before, obviously before we did. Yeah. Um, and before all this came out yesterday, I mean, there have been swirlings that at the end of last year, Vince was trying to at least Weasel's let everybody <laughs> know I'm coming back. So and, I don't know. And the reports are that when when that feeling out process went out, a majority of the talent and a majority of people in WWE were like, we don't want. Vince back well and I think too I think a lot of people when those reports started swirling didn't did or did not know that he was not going to be a part of the creative team right he was just going to come back to be part of the board to sell and that kind of thing which again we can only take Vince at his word at this point which he's not really a man of his word so (laughs) neither of us know him personally so we don't know how much water that it holds, but based right. on track record, doesn't it hold a lot. Doesn't look good. No, and you know, I think, and I, I forget who said this. I've heard multiple people say this, and I completely agree. Vince McMahon is the kind of guy that would rather burn WWE down himself than see it succeed without him. Mm, that's a good point. And I think he's realized, oh, this this company is actually succeeding. And doing better now that I'm not there, and I he, he his ego I feel like will not let him let that happen. It's interesting. It's interesting because you wonder like where where the lines of correct ego 
and love of what you created <laughs> what you created where right. do, where where is that line right you know what i mean so because i do think somewhere in this crazy man that you're looking at behind <laughs> us somewhere in his insane mind is a love for this business absolutely i don't know how little how big where it is where he lost it etc right but somewhere in there yeah he loves wrestling and he loves the business and he loves the people that he works with some more than others. <laughs> but yes, I said that, but the point I'm trying to make is like, kill your own creation. Like, I don't know, like what the real benefit of that right. is. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, he did it with NWO. He's going to do it again with a lethal dose oh of a poison, the lethal dose of poison. This, Good this inject time. poison. Yeah. That lethal dose of poison this time around is literally Vince McMahon coming back to the company. Unbelievable. So I, you know, I, I think that I don't think he's going to be, if he is going after creative, it won't happen immediately. Nope. I think we're talking summer, summer slam. I think we're talking maybe the rumble next year. Yep. However, I do think pretty soon we're going to see what his true intentions are. I see, I think it might take a while because... Because if, if he wants to sell, he's got to start moving some assets around now. Right. But if he also wants to sell, he also wants to save face. So I feel like he also... like once. You, I think once he gets into a good point where like this sell is going to go down, yeah. then I think he can make a move towards taking over creative because like you don't want the people you're trying to sell to to see you talking out of both sides of your mouth. Right, right. So if he is true about only selling and then they see this other thing over here, that doesn't look good. No. Then again, though, does Vince really care? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like Vince, Vince is just an entirely different beast he really than is. any other person on this planet. He really is. For the better and for the worse at times. Right. And, <laughs> and, you know, I, I would like to think that maybe he – would be fine with his daughter and his son-in-law running the company and for the first year have done a fantastic job yep. running the company. Um, but then again, I, I really think his ego is bigger than anything else. And I I feel like he's the kind of guy that would rather it crash and burn than his own family succeed at it. I think Thanksgiving and Christmas got real awkward. That's all I'm saying. I, I Honestly, again, opinion, speculation, if he does take over creative, I don't. I I see no way Triple H stays in the company. We'll wait and see. And if he walks out, boy, you better be ready for that wrestling company to start. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because he's taking William Regal with him. Yes, sir, he is. <laughs> and those two running a company together by themselves with no handcuffs. Oof. Sign me up. Could be interesting. Could you imagine? He also could will, you imagine? He'll also take Shawn Michaels with him. Oh yes, absolutely. Could you imagine the graphic? That's going to make you so mad. Imagine the graphic. Triple H all elite. No. Shawn Michaels all elite. Never. Triple, I would never say. I'm not going to say never. Triple H maybe. Shawn Michaels never. See, I would have said the other way around. Nope. I don't think so. I don't know. I think Triple H, and I don't think Triple H has a shot at it. I don't think he'll ever go to AEW, but I certainly don't think Shawn Michaels will go. No, I don't. I don't either. I don't think there's either way both of them will go. I do think if if he ever leaves on bad terms with WWE, he will absolutely start his own company. Oh, for sure. And will. there will be, I could see names like Seth Rollins jumping ship. Sure. To be with Triple H. And, I could see Karrion Cross. I could see again, Bray Wyatt. I, there's a lot of names that would jump. But again, we'll see how long that takes. We're right. probably looking at three to four years. Hopefully. And then it's going to take three years to unless build unless they start to see the signs of it early and they get out before it happens and well, start the process early maybe we shall see all right lots of speculation going on with that again we'll i'm sure we'll talk about it more we're gonna try not to beat a dead horse with this whole vince thing because again <laughs> it's it's our opinions this, we're, we're speculating at this, this point this is gonna be our austin theory this year ever feel probably like. <laughs> probably will if you listen to this in 2022 we talked about theory a lot literally probably every episode from money in the bank until the end of the year all right let's talk about smackdown let's run through these real quick we spent a lot of time on vince did not expect that but we did here we go uh thanks for hanging with us guys uh we're almost an hour into this show but let's get to it 
Uncle Howdy showing up on SmackDown, man. Got a new look to Uncle Howdy. We saw some physicality with Uncle Howdy. Or is it Uncle Howdy? Okay. <laughs> do tell. What do you think? I mean, I don't think they would drastically change the look this much. I do. Here's I, why. Okay. So he can wrestle in that. I think he wrestle in the other thing. No, I don't think so. See, I don't think Uncle Howdy's really going to wrestle, though. I think, I think, because there is some speculation that this guy could be named Uncle Harper hmm. after Luke sure. Harper and everything Absolutely. else. Absolutely, for sure. And if that's the case, then, like, I think Uncle Howdy could be the brains of the operation. Uncle Harper could be the muscle of the operation. And you go like that, because this is such a drastic change so quick that I don't, I don't really know. Did they name drop Uncle Howdy? Like, did they say this is Uncle Howdy on yes. commentary? Yes, they did. Okay, so it might, it might just be. But I, I, I think I wouldn't be shocked if this and was th- Uncle Howdy. I think the reason is because, like, we haven't, we didn't really see him no. when he first appeared. Yeah. So I know we've seen him in the videos and stuff, and this is a drastic change. Because the mask in the videos is, I like the mask a lot better than, than the one that But he's you right also, here. we saw on Monday, they're now selling Uncle Howdy masks. Yes, they are. At the merch stand. Yes, so, and it's not exactly like this. It's still a little bit different. But we, we did see a change. But even though we saw a change, we now see a little clearer picture yep. of this individual. Yep. Can't look at this. Tell me it's not Bo Dallas. Oh, no. It's Bo Dallas. It's, abs- it's a it's thousand percent Bo Everybody Dallas. online is talking about Vincent. Now, I'm not, to- Vincent. I'm not totally up on Vincent, so I can't stake a claim to that. Yep. That's Bo Dallas. The hair fits Vincent. The hair fits Vincent. But the face and it's, the chin is Bo. Bo Dallas. Um. For sure. That's what makes me think that there could be two different people. Could be. Like one we don't could know be Vincent, yet. one could be Bo Dallas at the same time. We're gonna find out in a pitch black match at Royal Rumble. I don't Rumble. even know what that is. Who knows I'm so what excited that is. for it. You know what I you know what I'm excited for? For Mountain Dew Pitch Black to be back. I'm oh, a yes. big fan. Let I'm, that be a, let that be the sponsor. I'm just it is. Is it really? Yeah. So that's that's why it's called a pitch black match. It's the Mountain oh, Dew pitch no. black match. Does that mean when Bray comes out, they're gonna like what they do with theory with the blade bay blades, they're gonna have Mountain Dew on the Titan Tron? I would love it. That would be great. <laughs> that would be so awesome. But yeah, that's the sponsor of the match. That's insane. I know it's gonna that's be great. Insane. I look, I have no idea what to expect from this. I think it it's gonna go one of two ways. It's gonna be either the most creative match we've seen in a long time, or it's gonna be a hell in a cell part two. <laughs> It cannot be worse than the zombie lumberjack match. Oh, no, 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 no. And I don't think it can be worse than the Hell in the Cell with Seth Rollins. Right. But it it, it's, it could be the uh, House of Horrors. It very much could be House of Horrors, Firefly Funhouse, etc. It was like the Firefly Funhouse match was amazing with John Cena. Right, but it wasn't like, okay, so there's the prediction. Is this match in the ring? Is it pre-taped? I think it has to be in the ring. I think portions may be pre-taped. Mm. I think the majority of it takes place in the ring. Okay. All right. I mean, it's Bray Wyatt. How can you not have Bray Wyatt's first televised match not be actually in the ring? Very easy. I mean, very easy, but I think it'd be I think it's a stupid decision they had him wrestle at Madison Square Garden. But and he broke his finger. Did he really? I didn't know he broke his finger. Yeah, if you watch on SmackDown, he's got his fingers taped. Oh. And then apparently he told a fan afterwards, again, speculated online. Total fan that he broke his finger in the match. Well, I I, th- I still think it was stupid that they had him wrestle on the house show for the first time instead well, of saving it for TV. Yeah, but they're probably just trying to get him <laughs> back in know, the ring. Back in the ring. Yeah. Get the ring rest in front of a live crowd. Yeah. And that's different than just bouncing around in a ring in a warehouse. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Charlotte Flair is back, ladies and gentlemen. Andy's favorite female wrestler. Beat my other favorite female wrestler. Beat your other, I mean, my oh goodness. This is the worst. This is a nightmare come true right here, man. At least you weren't in person for it this time. I will say, I would much rather have Charlotte as champ than Ronda. Oh, for sure. Because at least Charlotte can put on good matches. For sure. Does she need the title? Absolutely not. She does. She does not need the title. She does because that women's division on SmackDown Sucks. is suffering <laughs> so bad. I, I, I get that point. She still doesn't need it, in my opinion. I think I think you could bring over a Bailey. I think you could bring over a Becky, and it's more beneficial than Charlotte. Um, 
or you bring them over anyway. Right. Now, I will, say, I to, will say the Rumble just got a lot more interesting. Yes, it did. The women's Rumble just got a lot more interesting. Unless they swerve us again and Ronda takes the title off of Charlotte and then we're back to that at the Rumble. But I I think there's a good chance Rhea wins the Rumble now. Yes, me I think too. there's a good chance Becky wins the Rumble. I think there's a good chance that Naomi could come back and win the Rumble. I think she definitely comes back in the Rumble. Yeah. I, I there The thing now is the men's Rumble really only has two options for a winner. Okay. In my opinion. With Cody or The Rock, I think okay. those are the two that make storyline wise the most sense. I, I will say this: I am. I said this on the podcast months ago, and you laughed at me. And I don't think it's necessarily out of the realm of possibility. I think there's a good chance the honorary Roos could be the one to dethrone Roman at WrestleMania, and oh, sign me up for that if gosh. that happens. It's not gonna happen. You just gotta you gotta handle that very carefully because you don't want another Roman two thousand fifteen Rumble. Sure. Where Cody gets turned on because the fans want to see, because the fans want Sammy to win that. They, they want Sammy to do something with the bloodline. Well, I, but I think it all depends on how Sammy is handled in the Rumble. Because right. I think there's a situation where Sammy's not even in the Rumble. I don't think he's in the Rumble at all. So if you avoid that, then I think it's fine. I don't think any of the bloodline are in the Rumble. They're probably right. Nah, Solo. It wouldn't make sense for Solo, though. Why would he go after the Tribal Chief? I think Solo will be in the Rumble, though, just I think so, he can have, say Roman, so he can have the strong showing and yada, yada, yada. I think you, I, the one thing I will say is I could see Roman being like, all four of you are going to be in the Rumble to win. So that I don't have, so to, face I don't have to face anybody. We get down to the end, and somehow it's Sammy and Jay. Sammy tosses out Jay, and Sammy now is the Rumble winner heading to WrestleMania. I'd... I'm just saying I would pop for that, and I'm all for that. Don't think that happens, though. No, um, I think it's very clear we're going to Sammy and KO versus the Usos for that. And then we're going, we're going to Sammy and Roman, but it's going at Elimination yeah, Chamber. Yeah. Um, I do think it's going to be very interesting because if you watched the Money in the Bank promo that they just did for um, London. London. Shout out for that, by the way. Yeah, that's going to be amazing. Um, the WWE and the Universal title are separate. It's coming. I think, and Adam Pierce said on Raw, we're kind of jumping back and forth between the two shows, but we're Adam Pierce said on Raw, I would not be shocked if the way they get the title off of Roman Stripping. is stripping from the, yep. fr- with the WWE Championship. I would hate that, but it would be the easiest way and the, the best way to not have Roman lose before WrestleMania. Oh, get what, that you title could, off of what you could do is strip him of the title and have one of the Money in Bank matches be for the title. For the instead of having the briefcase, you get yeah. it for the title. See, I think I, I think that that title is going to be decided at WrestleMania. Mm, no, I, I think he holds it all the way through. I could absolutely also see The Rock saying, Oh, if you're man enough, put both titles on the line one night one, one night two, and The Rock get it one night, and the and Roman and uh, Cody get the next night. He could they they could do that. I I also think it could be a situation where they strip him afterwards, like that's one of the big raw after mania pops. <laughs> Is that they strip Roman of the title? Yeah, but then again, to me, it just it doesn't feel big enough to strip him of the title. Sure, it doesn't. I think you need to have because uh, there's there's no way there's zero percent chance that The Rock beats Roman. Right. I th- I think there's like n- there's not a single chance in the world that The Rock beats Roman. Right. And I think you want to get one of the titles off of him. Could you imagine the pop at WrestleMania night two? Put Cody in there, put Sammy in there, put Seth in there, put Kevin Owens in there, put somebody in there. Pin Roman Reigns one, two, three to win that WWE championship. But pop of the night. But that goes back to the same argument that I've given the whole time. It cheapens the other title that he has. I don't think so. Because he's lost. I so it, it's not as impactful. Like to me, I'm I'm a I don't want to separate the titles. I truly don't. I want there to be one championship. Yeah. Just one belt. One champion. I know a lot of people don't think that. You don't necessarily mm-hmm. think that. That's fine. But if you're going to have two championships and you have it on one person, in my opinion, it makes zero sense to for that person to lose one of them. Stripped of it, I can understand. But losing it, I just, I don't, I don't think it, I don't know. I think if it was the Universal Championship, I'd feel the same way because that's the one he's held since SummerSlam 2020. 
But at this point, like it's technically it's an undisputed championship. Right. So technically it's like, I don't know. I they really the solution was to not do this in the first place. <laughs> or the solution is to just have one championship. Yeah. And See, just go with it. And I think I think it's very interesting that they haven't gone to one title yet. Right. I, I think agree. that means that they're going to split the titles sure. at some point because if they well, weren't, they would already make a championship for Well, him. and it also looks aesthetically better for him to have two it titles. He looks he one. looks amazing with both titles around his neck. Charlotte Flair is who we were originally yeah, talking anyways, about. We really went off we on a tangent, but we're gonna get to Roman in just a second, a little bit more from SmackDown. Her new music is awesome. It is. It threw me for a loop for I a second. I love it. Yeah, I do too. So good. All right, Roman Reigns. And Sami Zayn fall defeat to John Cena and Kevin Owens on SmackDown. John Cena wrestles a match in 2022. He has now wrestled a match every single year for the last 20 years in a row. Yeah. So congrats to John Cena for that, even though his 2020 match yeah. was the Firefly Funhouse. But it it's counts. still fun. It's still fun. It counts. Whatever. Um, um, great atmosphere for this yeah. match. Loved it. We spent a lot of time talking about Roman and Sami, and we know where all that's going to go. Let's talk about these guys. What a match. Really cool, but for the love of everything that is good, can you please turn the ring mics down? Oh my gosh, so we can't hear everybody calling spots Cena, the last three minutes of the match. Cena and the ref were so me. bad. Like, Cena's always done this, Cena's always been bad about this. Right. Of like, just keep your mouth shut or just turn the mics down because you know he's going to do it. And it was, it was so loud, it was so loud. The ref was loud, two um, minutes. One yeah, minute tag, yeah. don't yeah, move. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, now, now. Like it's like just, just stop. Um, I will say this: the match was good. Absolutely a house show match style. For sure it was. felt like a house show from the beginning. That's what it needed to be, though. Yeah, I mean, you're the fans are there. The fans there specifically, people watching were there watching for John Cena's match. Sure, they were. Like they, that's all they wanted to see was Cena get in the ring and wrestle. He doesn't have a lot of bumps left in him. Nope. Don't waste a lot of bumps. I don't think he took a bump, did he? He didn't. Nope. <laughs> he gave he just gave out the bumps. He did. Um it was fun. I mean, it was a great time. Uh Roman got his receipt on KO for the ear slap. Uh, because yes, he, he got a black eye big time with yes, the he, did. That he gave him. Um yeah, it, it's SmackDown's gonna be very interesting tonight with yes, the is. fallout from Sami Zayn taking the pin and everything else. Yep. Uh, I think it's gonna be very, very interesting. And we've got the Usos against Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. Yeah. That'll be good. Yeah. Uh, we've got Ricochet against... Um, and we've got Walter versus Braun for the IC title. That's right. And then we've got Ricochet, Ricochet versus Top Dollar. Top Dollar which, which it'll be interesting to see if Ricochet gets his receipt. Probably. For what happened probably. on SmackDown. Probably. Swinging that chair wildly. <laughs> whacking Walter across the head. Yeah. That was really wild. All right. If, my, but if, somebody's, if somebody can appreciate a stiff shot, I'm pretty sure Walter can appreciate oh, for a sure. stiff shot. Like, I don't think he's mad about it. No. I'm just... That, Walter makes man, Walter makes guys a uh, chest cave in with a chops. Right. I'm pretty sure he's fine. That's true. All right, Monday Night Raw. Let's move on. We were there, ladies and gentlemen. Show this one. This was my seat. This is where I sat for Monday Night Raw. All right. Show the other one. That's where I sat. That's where you sat. My from, beautiful wife bought tickets for Christmas, and uh, she did a fantastic job. She did, do a fantastic except for job. the uh, street fight match. We'll talk about here in a minute. Couldn't see half of it. But it sounded fun because of all the weapons that were that were being used. Yes. Uh which yeah, we'll talk about it in just a second. But man, like I love live wrestling I do so too. much. I do too. There's nothing like it in the world. Especially especially with how much hype was around the show. Um right. I don't think it necessarily lived up to the full hype. Well, we but just it was fun. We just had a show with John Cena. Yeah. So like it's really hard to catch that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know, I think I mean the action was great the whole night. Yeah, uh, there there was not a bad, there was not a boring moment. There wasn't the whole really night. Which wasn't. normally in Rawls in person, even in person, there's a moment where it's like, all right, let's just let's even move on. Dexter and Chad Gable was, was like fun. so entertaining. It was fun. It was so good. Um, I will say, might be my favorite thing of the night. One of my favorite things of the night was Shelton Benjamin's promo at the end of main so event. So good. Yep. The dude got the love that he deserved. Yep. And uh, yeah, that was that was that was fantastic to see that. Speaking of. Hurt business in the background. Oh my gosh. I Play. pointed out I was the only one I think that saw that in my little section because I was freaking out and everybody's like, Why are you freaking out? Like hurt business is in the background. I know I saw it too because uh my buddy Levi, who's been on the show before, he was with me and I was like, It's our business. And he's like, What? <laughs> it's our business. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I was I was, really I, was I was excited for that. 
Um, it's a great show. I mean, it was a lot of fun yep. from top to bottom. You can see me on TV specifically at one point when Alexa is walking back through the crowd. Yep. I'm right there in my in this very hat. So yep. you can uh, you can definitely you can check that point out. Point it out for sure. Um yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Let's talk about that street fight, man. You talk about fun. I know you didn't get to see as much of it, but dude, <laughs> I was I was loving it. It was my literally my favorite thing of the night. So much fun. Yeah. And they they used everything. They did. Which was fantastic. Like we saw the grand piano out there. I was like, there's no way they're gonna use that. But Daggum, they used the grand oh my piano. Gosh, man. That finish was rough. And Hardy showing up and cracking solo with the guitar. I told uh, my buddy Zach and Levi that I went with, I told him, I said, listen, the Bloodline's getting involved in Hardy's performance. Oh, absolutely. They plugged that performance like three times on Raw. Yeah. Listen, they didn't do that just because it's in Nashville. No, They're no. getting involved. Yeah. It's going to be wild. Yeah, I think Solo's going to murder him uh, at the Rumble. <laughs> I, think, I, think it, I wouldn't be shocked if he's not in the Rumble. That would be interesting. Like I think he might be in the rumble. I maybe maybe not in the rumble, but cause Solo to get eliminated. Possibly. That would be Are fun. we heading to Hardy versus Solo at WrestleMania? Oh, I hope not. Oh my lordy, I hope not. <laughs> That's where Bad Bunny comes in. We get Bad Bunny versus Solo. Um, now that I'd be on board with that. I would be on board with. Uh, the tambourine was the most. You the keyboard was rough too. Yes, like both of those were were extremely rough. We can't take chair shots, but we can take tambourine shots. Yeah, to the, to head. the head. It's fine. It's oh fine. Uh, it was. It was. It was stiff. It was, <laughs> it was a stiff boy. Uh, I love the finish of the match though. Yep, um, very good. Very good. That piano spot was wicked. It was so good. It was very good. That was the side of the of the arena that I was on, so I got a clear view. I didn't know there was a piano there, and all of a sudden, I just I was like, oh, he's going to do like a urine. He's going to do the. Uh, what is it? The spitting urinagi yep. to the floor. Like that's a great finish. And all of a sudden I just heard the impact. I was like, what? Cause like I was sitting under the jumbotron. So I right. didn't even see what was going on in the jumbotron. So they showed the commercials like, Oh, that was a grand piano. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was amazing. Cause we were sitting there like, Oh, they're not going to use that. Not. And then all of a sudden they start heading that way. I was like, Oh, they're going to use that. They used everything. It was amazing. They really did. They used it all. All right, let's move on. A, a fantastic six man tag match that was made at the beginning of the show. You have the street Profits and Kevin Owens against sammy and the usos man what was up with montez i don't know i really don't i don't know if it was he was distraught about bianca that's what they alluded to on commentary i went back and watched it listen yeah. to commentary that's what they alluded to but i think it's interesting that they're using that yeah. because i think there's more i think they're i think this could lead to a potential heel run for montez yeah I think this could also lead to a potential Bray Wyatt versus Montez Ford thing at some point, which put those two together. That huh? would be fun. How, how do you, how do you get that? I think, well, one, I think Bray, I think Montez may go after Bray for what he made Alexa do. to his Oh, wife. okay. Um, or it could just be Montez versus uncle Howdy. Like I think uncle okay. Howdy could get involved in, in some of this other stuff as well. Um, maybe like a special SmackDown or, or something like that. I think we could be heading there. I think it's very interesting that it happened the way it did. Yep. Me too. Um, which like where I was sitting on the ring post side, I, we, I couldn't see Montez's reaction. All I saw and all I heard was Kevin Owens yelling, Tez, 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 tag, tag. And then he didn't, he was just kind of standing there. So um, it was very interesting. I, I don't know what to fully make of it yet. Nope. I just know it, it, it's going to be very interesting. I'm invested in this. I'm, I was invested in, in Alexa versus Bianca. Like, yeah, I think, I think was that great. was very, very handled very well. Yep, it was great. The shout out to Scary Movie in the beginning was <laughs> it was a chef's kiss. Yep. I didn't realize she was busted open from her lip as bad as she was until they showed the replay. It and didn't happen until the very end. It was. I think it, it happened rough. on one of the DDTs. Yeah. It was. It was. She bled quickly and a lot. It was yeah. rough. She posted on Instagram that she had to get stitches and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I like that connection with Bray. That could be interesting. I think you could see Tez as a member of the new Hurt Business if that becomes a thing. That's a good They're way to get him me. a heel rub. They're listening to my. They're listening to PBWF. I'm just PBWF. saying. I think if I think if Tez goes, Ford goes. I mean, I think if Tez goes, Dawkins goes. You think they both go? I don't. There's no way. No, I think that's the way he turns on him. Here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. I love Angelo Dawkins. Sure. I love Angelo Dawkins in the Street Profits. I think Montez Ford could absolutely go out on a singles run by himself and be a star. Right. I think Angelo Dawkins would be the Tucker of heavy machinery. For sure he would. That was a tag team that did not need to be split up. Uh, in my opinion, the Street Profits, as of right now, 
don't need to be split up. Right. They're they're much better together, I think, than they are separate. But because they are so popular. Yeah, it's the time to do it. He has to do something to turn heel if he's going to. <laughs> so, like, there has to be something where people know that they are supposed to boo him. Right. Rather right. than just join the Hurt Business. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I feel like there's got to be something, and that's the natural thing. Yeah. Do I think it absolutely has to happen? No, but I think it could. It's a possibility. Possibility. All right, let's move on to the big news of the night. Um, Seth Rollins potentially injured. Potent- we say potentially. So we were talking before we started recording, and Seth and everybody is selling it like it's big. <laughs> yeah. Rollins tweeted, redesign, rebuild, reclaim like he did when he got hurt the first time. Yeah. While that may be true, just some of the spots that he was doing, I just, I don't know how you can do it with a torn ACL. I don't think, I think if he did get hurt, I don't think it's a torn ACL. I think it's the same injury he got when Samoa Joe attacked him right. when he debuted, which was like a, was like a slight tear. or It like was some sort sprain. of meniscus something, yeah. I think. Um. The reason why I, I I will say this I do think he tweaked both of his knees for sure did yep, <laughs> at some point because sure when he picked him up for the buckle bomb his knee definitely like gave out yep Un- unless he just did it that great to make his knee go out which you know the dude has sold his knees since he tore his ACL so he he probably knows how to do that by now right. there was just there were some other things he did like leap to the top rope to do the the superplex yeah, and the arrow after he buckled on the buckle bomb. Then that's when he scaled the yeah. top rope and did not miss a beat. No. Nothing. Plus, Theory chop blocked his knee. Which, which I thought he got the other knee, but. I, 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 it may have been. Right. I think, it, I think, no, I think, you're, I think you're right. I think he I got think the right. knee that he hurt. So I, I think it's all storyline. Um, there, are, there are also a couple more spots in there, like yeah. the back suplex yeah. and a couple of things that they would he not have done. Dive. That, was, that, was that was before. That was yeah, before. That was before. Yeah. But they had a couple of spots that they wouldn't have done if he actually would have gotten hurt. Now, I will say this. When he was walking and when he was trying to run after Theory yeah, and when he was trying to do the stomp, if he was selling, he did a masterful job of selling that he couldn't walk correctly. It may have been the case of adrenaline taking over. Well, that's true. And he was able to do it. And then, because like afterwards, he did see when he was walking back up the ramp and Corey was helping him he did seem like he was struggling to walk sure um so i don't i don't know it was it's it's going to be interesting i think if he is injured i don't think he's necessarily severely injured um the way he's gonna miss a lot of time uh i wouldn't be shocked if he didn't if he was on tv until the rumble rumble comes then he's there i think um, wwe does need to address it though in some way i think they will monday you think so i think they will okay. monday. yeah right. i think he'll be i think he'll be there to cut a promo okay all right we shall see. Are we? I don't know. Maybe we're heading to Rollins Theory one on one at Rumble instead. Possibly. I don't know. All right. Lots of stuff. <laughs> Hope you guys are digging what we're doing here. First episode of season number four. Thanks for hanging out with us. Make sure you're following on social media at PBW Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Let us know if you're digging what we're doing. If there's something you want us to talk about, something you want us to cover, let us know. We appreciate that feedback. Our show, again, is available on the Body Slam Dunnett YouTube channel, Sportswire Radio, and wherever you find your podcast. And I mean wherever <laughs> you find your podcast. All right? So make sure that you're subscribed. Follow along with us every Friday. Brand new episodes about the current product. Every Tuesday, PBWF episodes on a separate feed, Pie Bomb Wrestling Federation Go check it out. Season one is coming down to the wire. Don't worry. There won't be a very long break in between season one and two. In fact, probably shorter than you think. (laughs) All right. So that's going to do it, man. Season four, episode one in the books, man. We're here. We're ready. We are here again. Shout out to TSF. Thanks for that intro video. Prayers up for our boy Grillo. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. For Mr. Andy York, he is at Andy underscore PBWP. My name's Chris Belcher. I'm at Chris Belcher 24. Again, the show's at PBW Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are out of time. Thanks for hanging out with us. We will catch you guys down the road.